So uh, as we wrap up the, uh, the Electric Flight Symposium, uh, we've had a great day today. We've heard from uh, a lot of different viewpoints on this growing industry and exciting viewpoints. Uh, and it's great that there are a lot of similarities. It's great that there are a bunch of differences in, in what's going on, uh, that we're diverging and, and innovating in different directions. So uh, just a, a few words of thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you to our speakers and panelists. Let's give everyone uh, another round of applause. That's been great. There are hundreds of people who've worked hard over the last decade and decades to make this industry possible. And so I think we also owe a big thanks to the industry, the pioneers of electric flight, the people who couldn't be here with us, uh, but whose work has supported getting this industry to the point we're at now. Uh, and also love to thank our audience. Thank you for, uh, for being a, an active, vibrant community that's supporting the electric flight industry. It's great to have you here, so I'd like to give uh, all of you a, a round of applause and give yourselves a round of applause. As we look at uh, electric propulsion, uh, it's important to remind ourselves that revolutions in aviation tend to follow revolutions in propulsion. We actually heard that alluded to in multiple presentations today. If we look at the emergence of the jet engine, in just 10 short years, we went from things that looked like a P-51 Mustang to things that looked like that F-100 Super Sabre down there. And that wasn't just a matter of a P-51 with a jet engine. The early jet aircraft looked a little bit like that, and it's critical to go through that phase. That's how we learn. But the long-term impact then changes the very essence of what the plane looks like, what it's capable of, its performance, and with batteries, we're not just changing the propulsion, we're changing the fuel at the same time. And so I think we can expect the changes that electric brings to aviation to maybe in some cases be even more radical than the jet engine when it comes to what those aircraft look like and maybe what they're capable of. Looking at where we stand as an industry now, we're really in the culminating years, I would say, of, of what I like to say is stage one of the development of the electric flight industry. There are literally dozens of electric aircraft that are currently flying in various regions around the world in various programs, and that represents decades of work coming to fruition where we are now at the point where there are multiple programs that look very viable for marketing, certifying, uh, producing electric aircraft for the flight training market, for the recreation market. And that is a very exciting position for this industry to be at, and it's a necessary position. This is creating the players that will be instrumental in the coming years in this industry. The second stage of this evolution is going to involve the things that you probably can't go out and certify right now. Maybe we don't quite know if they're going to work. Uh, the, the things that are a little bit more radical that are going to take some more time. And the exciting thing about these programs is that they're not just on paper. We've got examples over here of real hardware, whether it's on the ground in, in components, whether it's airborne, uh, whether it's somewhere in between. Uh, and this is exciting because we're starting to see the emergence of that second stage of development of this industry, which relies on that first stage and then builds upon it as we learn more about what the existence of electric propulsion does to the, uh, to the design of an aircraft. And then we have that third stage, which probably is the, the one that has the most impact on people outside the aviation community and that starts to impact what transportation around the world looks like. And whether it's these concept aircraft from people like Boeing or Airbus, whether it's some of the personal transporter uh, concepts that have come out of Mark Moore's group at NASA, these are things that are radically different, that represent huge changes in our transportation infrastructure around the world, and that, frankly, we're not sure which ones of these are going to pan out yet. But the first two phases of the development of this industry are instrumental in creating this and really impacting how billions of people ultimately move around the world. 
So the only things that really stand in our way are money, paperwork, and batteries. Uh, <laughs> just three small things. But it's exciting because what you've heard today is that we're making progress in all of these. We have R&D programs. There are R&D programs outside of aviation that are funding this. We're working on certification. The batteries are evolving forward. So you know, I come back and look at this. We've had a very exciting last 10 years in electric aviation. And it's been slower than many of us wanted it to be but it's been extremely valuable and it's been necessary and we're now hitting that tipping point where some very exciting things are ready to happen just as they did with the jet engine. So I, I think, again, how do we do that again? How do we do that again? How do we accelerate uh, the development of this electric aircraft industry that has so much potential? It's constantly running through my mind and has been, and I've been trying to push those buttons because I'm not an engineer, although I want to design that flying bike thing, <laughs> if nothing, for just for exercise. Um, how do we do that? That's our mission. We want to make aviation clean, quiet, exciting. I don't want to wait until what we see happening in Europe that's causing so much electric aircraft activity um, the regulations of noise that George talked about, um, clean air, uh, emissions, et cetera. We wanna, don't want to be forced into that. We want to go there proactively. Um, I don't want to see that. So how do we do it again? We've got a vision. This is our journey. We're going to start over there with our program. And we want to um, get to a point where all of us, and I want all of you to just imagine what it's like to fly in an airplane, right? You've got your noise-canceling headsets on because it's loud, and after an hour or two, they hurt your head. Imagine doing it quietly and maybe cheaply and safely and, and with renewable energy. That's the future that we want, and that's why we're here today. And I, I thank you all for coming. Um, it is a, it, we're not doing it because it's easy, but because we have that passion um, that Paul talked about, and we're doing it kind of because it's hard and it is a challenge. It is a very worthy challenge, one that we need to give that next generation. Thank you.